Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps, and if you cannot guess by the figure in front of you, we are painting Iron Man. Now, I haven't done a Marvel Crisis Protocol figure in a little while. Uh, this was actually my son's birthday week, as we like to call it here, and one of his favourite characters at the moment is Iron Man, so it felt fitting to paint this. It also fits the theme that I have done so much metallic painting over the last week that I might as well just keep the good times going. So I primed the model black and then I gave all the metal areas a heavy overcoat of the uh, Stormhost silver. That was the word I was looking for. This gave me this nice flat silver to play off. And I grabbed my army speed paint Zealot G Yellow to begin the process. Now, this model does not have a lot of colors, as you'll come to see in the video. I've got the yellow areas, red, some blue, and then I use a couple of colors on the base. So this is very quick. It's going to be a quick and dirty video indeed, as the titles always say. And I'm really happy with the result. I've got the figure in my hand and yeah, of course, there's things that I can improve on. There's layering I could do, there's highlight and all that good stuff. But the way he currently looks, I think this is quite possibly the best Marvel Crisis figure I have done to date so far. I really like the effect I got on him. And I'm, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. So hopefully by the end of this video, if uh, you hang around long enough, you'll enjoy the result too. If you do, make sure you drop me a little comment below. I don't know, is there an iron symbol that you could use in the chat? If there is, drop that and I'll make sure to reply and pin it to the top of the comment section. So I'm not going to lie, I had no idea where the yellow went. I've got a few images in front of me, but the suit doesn't seem to match any of the images that I'm finding. So I'm going to go a little rogue and just pick what I think looks right for the gold. Now this is going to take uh, a little while, so while we're doing the yellow, we'll read a bit about Mr. Iron Man. So Iron Man is a superhero appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics, co-created by writer and editor Stan Lee, developed by scripter Larry Lieber and designed by artists Don Heck and Jack Kirby character first appeared in Tales of Suspense 39 in 1962. Wow. And received his own title, Iron Man, in 1968. Shortly after his creation, Iron Man became founding member of the superhero team The Avengers, alongside four, Ant-Man, the Wasp, and the Hulk. Iron Man's stories individually and with the Avengers have been published consistently since the character's creation. Wow, so 62, that's uh, 240, 64 years. Wow, I didn't actually realize he was that old. I knew he'd been around for a while, didn't truly appreciate just how long. Uh, Iron Man is the superhero persona of Anthony Edward Tony Stark, businessman and engineer who runs the weapon manufacturing company Stark Industries. When Stark was captured in a war zone and sustained a severe heart wound, he built his Iron Man armor and escaped his captors. Iron Man suits of armor grant him superhuman strength, flight, energy projection and other abilities. The character was created in response to the Vietnam War as Lee's attempt to create a likeable pro-war character. Since his creation, Iron Man has been used to explore political themes with early Iron Man stories being set in the Cold War. The character's role as a weapons manufacturer provided controversial and Marvel moved away from geopolitics by the 1970s. Instead, the stories began exploring themes such as civil unrest technological advancement, corporate espionage, alcoholism, and governmental authority. Major Iron Man stories include Demon in the Bottle in 79, Armor Wars, which went from 87 to 88, Extremist, 2005, Iron Man 2020 in 2020, and he was, of course, the leading character in the company-wide story Civil War, 
Dark Reign and Civil War 2, which ran from 2006 up to 2016. Additional superhero characters have emerged from Iron Man's supporting cast, including War Machine, Ironheart, as well as reformed villains such as Natasha Romanoff as Black Widow and Clint Barton as Hawkeye. Iron Man's list of enemies include his arch enemy the Mandarin and many supervillains of communist origins and many, of course, of his business rivals. Robert Downey Jr. portrayed Tony Stark in Iron Man 2008, the first film of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and continued to portray the character until his final appearance in Avengers Endgames. Downey's portrayal popularised the character, elevating Iron Man into one of Marvel's most recognisable superheroes. Other adaptions of the characters appear in animated director video films, TV series and video games. Ooh, I thought that would last longer. We're still on the gold, guys. We're still on the gold. I can't believe it. Right, I think though, I'm pretty much done with the gold. We'll let that dry and we can move on to the blood red. Right, as we paint the blood red for his armor, we might as well read up on the armor as well as we've got the time. Uh, oh, there is a great picture here, I will share that as well. Iron Man does not have any superhuman abilities, instead he derives his strength from a powered armour of his own design. The armour is equipped with various weapons which include repulsor rays in each palm that project particle beams as well as a stronger uni beam on his chest. As of 2010, Marvel described Iron Man's armour as being able to lift 100 tons and 100 tons and fly at Mark 8. Marvel initially depicted the armor as powered by transistors, but this was replaced with integrated circuits as well as real-world technology advanced. New designs have further miniaturized the technology, ultimately incorporating nanotech. Developments in the armor's design often reflected real-world advances in technology and the trends in science fiction. The changing nature of the armor allows artists to make frequent changes to the character's appearance without controversy. Iron Man has also created specialized models for certain purposes, including space armor, stealth armor, deep sea armor, as well as the Hulk Buster armor to engage in combat with the Hulk. Prior to Iron Man's surgery, the armor's primary function was to produce a magnetic field that projects protected his heart from the shrapnel in his body. His efforts to keep it charged and to keep it secret drove the story's plot. From its first appearance, Stark has controlled the armor by linking it to his brainwaves, and he must calibrate it to any allies who use it. The armor is often shown to have some method of shrinking it down to make it portable when not being used. Iron Man stories contrast the armor's strengths and vulnerability of the human side inside of it. The armor protects Iron Man externally from attacks, but it also protects him internally when it kept his heart beating. The form-fitting design of many Iron Man armors emphasizes this with a human figure in an otherwise robotic-looking character. During the Extremist story arc, Iron Man adopted a biotechnological armor embedded in his DNA and stored in his bones. This allowed him to summon the armor from within his body and control it with his mind, effectively giving him superhuman abilities. This reduced the input lag between his brain and his armor and allowed him to mentally interface with any technology in the world and gave him focus to engage in several unrelated tasks at once. The extremist technology also converted Iron Man's mind into a digital storage device to create a backup of his memory. It also presented a weakness as Iron Man's arch nemesis Mandarin was able to access and manipulate the data. Iron Man gave up the extremist armor after it was compromised with a computer virus by the Scrolls who used it to disable Earth's defenses during an invasion. I had never heard of any of that. That sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, right. 
Let's see, we have a leg and an arm painted. And look at that red though, it's looking beautiful. I'm telling you, I, I love doing metallic paint this way. We just slap down the base color of metallic and then you can use contrast paints to make any color metallic that you want. This could be very, uh, this could be the future of the channel. Here guys, I'm not gonna lie. First we had the Space Marine that it worked really well on. Now it's working on this one. I know my uh, executioners do it with the blue, but the blue's really dark, so it's less noticeable. But I am really enjoying this. I've, have I changed my mind about metallics? Do I need to buy more metallic paint and test out what I can achieve with speed paints over the top of different colors? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a paint company would love to send me their metallic paints. Because I don't know what I'm doing with them. Maybe if somebody else could tell me what to do with them, that'd be even more helpful. But it looks like we need to keep chatting a bit more about Iron Man, because this is a slightly longer painting video than usual. These panels take a while. So let's keep going. Uh, his known allies. we got Pepper Potts. Stark Industries employee who Stark promoted to his executive assistant. The original portrayal of the character was that of a simple love interest and a damsel in distress. She came to manage the business herself as Stark had little interest in his responsibilities. When Stark became Iron Man and took, and took responsibility for his company, she taught him how to manage the business. When Pepper was injured by an explosion and received a heart injury similar to Iron Man's, he installed the arc reactor technology in her. She eventually became the CEO of Stark Industry. Iron Man secretly worked on a suit of armor to be powered by her arc reactor, and when she discovered it in Stark Industries' lab while she was in control of the company, taking the armor, she became the superhero rescue. James Rhodes, an employee of Starks. He first appeared in 1979 and was developed as a sporting character in 1981. He briefly became Iron Man while Stark had relapsed on alcoholism. Later on, when Stark was near death, he gave Rhodes his corporation and the War Machine armor. Stark let Rhodes keep the armor and Rhodes became the superhero War Machine. Rhodes' dependency on Iron Man for his armor often constrains him as a supporting character to Stark, even in the solo War Machine stories. Happy Hogan was hired as Stark's chauffeur after saving his life, and Happy later deducted Stark was Iron Man. Iron Man has other allies through his affiliation with the Avengers, including a close personal relationship with Captain America and Man and the Wasp. As Tony Stark, he is the benefactor of the Avengers, providing their headquarters at Avengers Mansion. Stark's butler, Edwin Jarvis, works for both Iron Man and the Avengers. During a period without Pepper, Stark hired a new secretary, Miss Arbog Arbogask. Iron Man is also supported by his artificial companion, Joe Castor, and Friday. His association with S.H.I.E.L.D. sees him working with agents and leadership. Uh, he was taken on other heroes as sidekicks, including Spider-Man and Jack of Hearts. Other characters in the Marvel Universe have taken up the Iron Man mantle beside Stark, including James Rhodes and Victor Von Doom, which, as we all now know, Tony Stark's actor, Robert Downey Jr., is coming back as Victor Von Doom in the MCU plot lines. I've kind of fallen out of love with the MCU at the moment. Uh, I'm really behind on the movies in general. So I'm actually interested to see how they justify using the same actor for multiple... I know it's not the first time, guys. Don't hate me. Don't hate me for asking that question. But I feel when he's been such an iconic person, you shouldn't bring him back for a villain. There's so many good actors out there that could have played a Victor Von Doom. Did not need to be Robert Downey Jr. I'm sorry. It's just how I feel. Uh, the Iron Man armor itself came to life in the mask in the Iron Man storyline and becoming violent before sacrificing itself to save Stark's life. Now, as you can see, we are only halfway through the model's chest, but I think I've talked enough to you guys. 
So we're going to skip forward. You get the idea. I'm slowly working my way through the model, painting all his armor panels red. Right, with the final swipes of red going down, it's time to start working on the base. Let me just make sure I got all the bits. Look at that. That red is looking glorious. He's so bright. He's so punchy. I really like it. I've never played MCU. Let me know if I should actually try it out. I've only got first edition. I don't have the second edition. I'm not going to go out my way to buy too many new figures, but... I really enjoy painting the odd superhero figure now and again. So for the base, I grabbed a rack of flesh shade. I'm going to do the brickwork in this. I'm not going to be fancy here. I'm going to pick it out. I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to throw a wash on it. Super easy. Nothing too fancy here. I picked this color because the rest of the model doesn't have flesh tone. It's very metallic. Even the base I've put it on because we've got these metal doors on it. It's just a lot of metal on the model, so I thought a flesh tone would contrast really well against the red and the gold. So I'll quickly block that in, and we'll come back. Right, that is now drying, and I grab the Necron Armor Gloss Shade, Cryptek Armor Shade. Gives it a nice golden brown color. I used this for the first time in a long time. In the video previous to this one for the ABC Warriors, the G-Men, I used it on their pistols. Really liked the effect it gave, and I thought it would work great for these... I don't know what they are. They may be like the the drop for a bar, or there's electrical cables under it. I don't know, street maintenance people, if you, are, if you happen to be watching. What is the official name for these? As far as I'm concerned, it's just like a metal door that goes underground. So I'm going to just do this. There was a part of me that wanted to do this in patchiness and then have another color over the top. But then I thought that's going to be too much color going down. I was thinking like a green could make it look rusty, look at look, make it look a little rough. But I decided against it and I think that was the right call. Now the camera has unfocused, so we're going to jump forward. Right, we're going to leave all this to dry now. And I grab the plasmatic bolt which is a beautiful like aqua bluey green color and I'm gonna use two dabs of this one's going straight into the chest oh eh, eh, there we go get the camera to focus come on come on there we go it's gonna go straight in the chest nice and simple and then on his hand and there you go pretty much done I'm gonna grab the a black wash to do the base and I'll take the glamour shots and will you can join me for that in a minute if you have enjoyed this or gained any entertainment of any sort please do consider dropping a like follow subscribe drop a comment if you want and if you really feel generous and I truly appreciate the people that are doing this if you hit the membership button for two dollars a month I'm using it to buy energy drinks and coffee and I very much appreciate those of you that are doing it. It's keeping my energy levels high. It's keeping the morale high. And we are starting to pump through projects left, right and center. But anyway, enough of me waffling. Enjoy the glamour shots and I'll catch you in the video very soon. Next Sunday we'll be back to Aliens. But enjoy.